My, what a wonderful day. <laughs> I used to sing that on my way to work in the morning. Listen, uh, my mission uh, every day is to fight for a smaller, less costly, and more accountable government. And over the last uh, five years, our majority has advanced uh, conservative reforms uh, that will help our children and their children. We're now on track to cut government spending by $2.1 trillion over the next 10 years. We've made the first real entitlement reform in nearly two decades. And we've protected 99% of the American people from an increase in our taxes. And we've done all this with a Democrat in the White House. So I'm proud of uh, what we've accomplished. But more than anything, my first job as speaker is to protect uh, the institution. A lot of you know that, uh, now know, uh, that uh, my plan was to step down at the end of last year. I decided uh, uh, in November of uh, 2010 that uh, when I was elected speaker that uh, serving two terms would uh, have been plenty. And, uh, but in June of last year, when it became clear that the majority leader lost his election, uh, I frankly didn't believe it was right uh, for me to leave at the end of last year. Uh, so my goal was to leave at the end of this year. So I planned uh, actually on my birthday, November 17th, uh, to announce that I was leaving at the end of the year. Uh, but uh, it's become clear to me that uh, this prolonged leadership turmoil uh, would do uh, irreparable harm to the institution. Uh, so this morning I informed my colleagues that uh, I would resign from the speakership and resign from Congress at the end of October. Now, as you've often uh, heard me say, uh, this isn't about me. It's about the people, it's about the institution. Uh, just yesterday, we witnessed uh, the awesome sight of uh, Pope Francis addressing uh, the greatest legislative body in the world. And I hope that uh, we will all uh, heed his call to live by the golden rule. Uh, but last night, last night, I started to think about this. And uh, this morning, I woke up and I said my prayers, as I always do. And I decided, you know, today's the day I'm going to do this. As simple as that. Uh, that's the code I've always lived by. If you do the right things for the right reasons, the right things will happen. And I know uh, good things lie ahead uh, for this house uh, in this country, and I'm proud of what we've accomplished, especially proud of my team. You know, uh, I've been here uh, my 25th year here, and I've succeeded in large part because uh, I've put a staff together and a team together, uh, many of which have been with me for a long time. And, uh, and without uh, a great staff, uh, you can't be a great member, and you certainly can't be a great speaker. And I'm going to thank uh, my family for putting up with this uh, all these years. My poor girls, who are now 37 and 35, uh, their first uh, campaign photo uh, was in uh, July of 1981. And so uh, they've, uh, they've had to endure all this. It's one thing for me to have to endure it. I've got thick skin. Uh, but, uh, you know, the girls and my wife, uh, they've had to put up with a lot over the years. Uh, let me express uh, my gratitude uh, to my uh, constituents uh, who've uh, sent me here uh, 13 times uh, over the last uh, 25 years. Uh, you can't get here without, uh, without getting votes. Uh, but, uh, uh, and I, I said this often, people ask me, what's the, what's the, greatest thing uh, about being speaker or about being an elected official. And I said, well, it's the people you get to meet. You know, I've met tens of thousands of people in my own congressional district that I would never have met other than the fact that I decided to run for Congress. And uh, over the years, as I traveled on behalf of uh, my colleagues in the party, uh, I've met tens of thousands of additional people all over the country. And uh, you meet rich people, you meet poor people, you meet interesting people. Eh, probably a few boring ones along the way. Uh, but uh, I can tell you that 99.9% .9 of the people I meet uh, on the road, anywhere, uh, could, not be, uh, could not be nicer uh, than, uh, than they've been. It's, uh, it's, been, it's been, really, it's been wonderful. Uh, it's been an honor to serve in this institution. And with that, all right, Junior, go ahead. Speaker Boehner, you were noticeably overcome with emotion yesterday. Really? Oh, well, what a surprise. I'm curious, <laughs> if you reached this decision last night, if the 
grace of Pope Francis led you to this decision? Uh, no, no. Yesterday was a wonderful day. It really was. And uh, was I emotional yesterday? I think I was. Uh, I was really emotional in a moment that uh, really no one saw. Uh, as uh, the Pope and I were getting ready to exit the building, we found ourselves uh, alone. And uh, the Pope uh, grabbed my left arm and, and uh, said some very kind words to me about uh, my commitment to kids and education. And the Pope puts his arm around me and kind of pulls me to him and says, please pray for me. Well, who am I to pray for the Pope? But I did. If it wasn't the Pope, then what was it? Uh, it's, uh, and listen, it was never about the vote, all right? There was never any doubt about whether I could survive a vote. I don't want my members to have to go through this. I certainly don't want the institution to go through this. And so... Especially when, you know, I knew I was, I was thinking about walking out the door anyway. So it's the right time to do it, and frankly, I am entirely comfortable doing it. Mr. Speaker, I've heard you say before that a leader who doesn't have anybody following him is just a guy taking a walk. That's right. I got plenty of people, I got plenty of people following me, uh, but uh, this turmoil that's been uh, churning now for a couple of months uh, is not good for the members, and it's not good for the institution. And uh, uh, if I wasn't planning on leaving here soon, uh, I can tell you I would not have done this. If I, if I may just yeah. continue, there are people who are on the right in your caucus and even outside of this institution who have been wanting you to step down for uh, some time who uh, feel that they have a victory today. Uh, Do you feel that you, that you were pushed out? No. Uh, the members... Uh, uh, the I'm glad I made this announcement at the conference with all of my Republican colleagues, uh, because uh, it was a it was it was a very good moment uh, to help kind of rebuild the team. Uh, listen, uh, I feel good about what I've done. Uh, I know that I every day uh, I've tried to do the right things for the right reasons and try to do the right thing for the country. Speaker, how can this not be a moment of turmoil? You said you, you thought about leaving two years ago after it happened, but at the time you said this would have pitched the house in turmoil. You have to keep the government open in a couple of days, the debt ceiling. There's going to be one. I'm going to be here for another. Barn burner of leadership. I'm going to be here for another five weeks, and uh, I'm not, not going to leave. Uh, I'm not going to sit around here and do nothing for the next 30 days. There's a lot of work that needs to be done, and I uh, plan on getting as much of it done as I can uh, before I exit. And as a result, though, because, does that make it easier in some ways to make some tougher decisions, maybe relying on Democrats to keep the government open next week or no. something? I'm going to make the same decisions I would have made regardless of this. Mr. Speaker, you've made no secret of your frustration with some members of your far right flank and some outside groups you've used words like knuckleheads and some other words we probably can't use on probably. television. Probably. <laughs> um, had you just had enough, and how will anything be different for the no, next No, no, I, I, let me tell you, uh, I would not describe it as, uh, as, as having had enough. And that's not it at all. Uh, when you're the Speaker of the House, uh, your number one responsibility is to the institution. And, uh, and having a vote like this in the institution, uh, I don't think is very healthy. And so uh, I've done everything I can uh, over the, my term as Speaker to strengthen the institution. Uh, and, and frankly, my move today uh, is, a, is another step in that effort to strengthen the institution. But won't the next Speaker face the same thing? Uh, hopefully not. That's my question, Mr. Speaker. How will Washington be different because you leave this institution? What, what should people watching this expect the House and Congress to do going forward if you're not here? Well... If, we, if the Congress stays focused on the American people's priorities, there will be no problem at all. And, uh, and while we have differences between Democrats and Republicans, uh, the goal here as one of the leaders is to find the common ground. Listen, I talked to President Bush and President Obama this morning. Uh, I've talked to all my legislative uh, uh, leaders, who I have a very good relationship with all of them. Because at the end of the day, the leaders have to be able to work with each other, trust each other, uh, to find the common ground to get things done. 
Uh, and uh, so if the Congress stays focused on what the, is important to the American people, they'll get along just fine. Can you tell us how, the, how your conference reacted to the news? Oh, I say they were shocked. <laughs> <laughs> Can you Surprise. elaborate a little more on that? Maybe how the leadership itself reacted? Yeah, I told Mr. McCarthy uh, about the two minutes before I spoke what I was going to do. I had to tell him five times because he didn't believe me. <laughs> I said, you better believe me. Should McCarthy be the next speaker? Uh, listen, I'm not going to be here to vote uh, on the next speaker, but uh, uh, that's up to the members. Uh, but having said that, I think that Kevin McCarthy would make an excellent speaker. Yes, who was the first person you told and what did they say? Wow. Well, I told my wife. What did you say? <laughs> Good. <laughs> I, uh, uh, I told my chief, my chief of staff and I talked late yesterday. And I told him I was thinking that today might be the day. And uh, I told him I'd sleep on it. So uh, before I went to sleep last night, I told my wife, I said, you know, I might just uh, make an announcement tomorrow. Well, what do you mean? What kind of announcement? Well, I might just tell them it's time to go. So uh, this morning I woke up and uh, walked up to Starbucks as usual and got my coffee and came back and read and walked up to Pete's Diner and saw everybody at Pete's and got home and thought, yep, I think today's the day. <laughs> so... Uh, uh, my senior staff was having a meeting at uh, 845 and kind of walked in before I opened the house and told them, uh, this is today. <laughs> it's going to happen someday. Well, why not today? Do you know when the next election might be held? Uh, no. Paul. Um, what advice will you give Kevin McCarthy based on your five years? What advice do you give him to avoid the same pitfalls that you've come across? Well, uh, I'll tell Kevin, uh, if he's the next speaker, that his number one responsibility is to protect the institution. It, it, nobody, nobody else around here has an obligation like that. Uh, secondly, I tell him the same thing I've just told you. If you just do the right thing every day for the right reasons, then the right things will happen. Uh, you all know me. Uh, my colleagues know me. I'm always straight with them. You know, they may not like the answer they get, but they'll get an honest answer every single time they come to my office. Uh, it's just an easy way for me to do my job. You originally um, planned to announce this on your birthday. And if it wasn't the Pope, what factors sort of weighed in on your decision to do this now? Uh, just all the, uh, this uh, stuff I read about in the paper. and <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's... Uh, I, I really don't want to hurt the institution hurt, and I don't want my colleagues hurt. I don't want I don't want to put my colleagues through all this for what? So, yes. What are you, Peter, What are you going to miss? Pardon me. What will you miss? What will I miss? <laughs> well, of course, all of you. <laughs> uh, I don't know what I'm going to miss because I haven't missed it yet. But uh, uh, I'll certainly miss the camaraderie of the house. And I, uh, <laughs> let me tell you another story uh, that uh, was really kind of interesting. Maxine Waters and I, uh, Democrat from Southern California, uh, came here uh, 25 years ago in the same class. Now, you know, there's nothing about my politics and Maxine Waters' politics that's even anywhere close. Uh, but uh, yesterday, about 5.30, she called my office. I got a note that she called, so I called her back. And, uh, <laughs> and she said, you know, I've, kind of, I've watched you for 25 years here. We came here together and watched uh, your career and uh, watched you today. And she says, I just want to tell you something. I'm really proud of you. You know, uh, listen, I've got the best relationships on both sides of the aisle uh, because uh, I treat people fairly and treat them honestly. And... Uh, and, but it's, I'm going to miss, uh, certainly miss my colleagues. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, to go back to the theme of trying to take turmoil out of the House and stabilize the institution, how, how do you think that um, it can become more stable? Several Republicans I talked to today from your conference said they don't think a new speaker will mean any new outcome, especially with an untested leader and the untested leadership. How could it become more stable. As I mentioned earlier, the fact that I did this uh, with my colleagues this morning, um, then we proceeded to have an hour and a half uh, conversation, 
uh, I thought was a was a unifying moment. And uh, uh, between uh, that and uh, uh, the Pope's uh, call for living by the golden rule yesterday, hope springs eternal. Speaker, can you talk about what you think your legacy is as you're leading? What are your most important accomplishments? And what are you going to do on November 1st? Are you living in Florida? <laughs> I'm, I was never in the legacy business. You all heard me say it. I'm a regular guy with a big job. And uh, uh, I never thought I'd be in Congress, much less I'd ever be Speaker. Uh, but uh, uh, people know me as being fair, uh, being honest, uh, being straightforward, uh, and trying to do the right thing every day on behalf of the country. Yeah, that's, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need any more than that. Speaker Vayner, you seem very relieved. Um, <laughs> zippity doo dah. Yeah. Zippity. Uh, yeah. I mean, by speaking, speaking zippity doo dah, what, what are your plans next? And also, have you talked to, um, have you spoken? To you know, uh, when you make a decision uh, this morning, you haven't had, oh, really haven't had any time thinking about what I'm going to do in the future. I have no idea. Uh, but uh, I do know this. Uh, I'm doing this today uh, for the right reasons. And you know what? The right things will happen as a result. Thanks. Have you spoken to Pelosi at all? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from the back due to the size of the crowd. Thank you. Uh,